Hi everyone. So some of you may be wondering how to handle situations where you navigate the same patient um, in multiple episodes where maybe your navigation program helped the patient through um, all their cancer treatment and survivorship and then hasn't been in contact with the patient and that first case is closed, but now they're back because of a recurrence or some other new um, set of needs. Um, so what do you do in that scenario? Um, so I just want to bring your attention to a few different ways that can play out. First of all, um, if we go to the PN bot setup sheet that you would want to visit um, before starting data entry into PN bot, um, if you scroll down to the case slash navigated episode of cancer section where you can choose the variables you want there, um, if you want to be able to say um, this case is a recurrence or isn't a recurrence, make sure you check off this recurrence variable over here um, to make sure that's enabled. Um, so I'm just going to go back to my home screen and I just want to show you what that looks like. So let's say that my patient um, has a recurrence. Maybe I navigated them in the past, but they have never been entered into PNBOT. In that case, we would just enroll them as a new patient. I'm going to create a new patient record because they haven't ever been entered before. I'm going to sign client ID 3, and I'm just going to go through these um, data fields really quickly. Um, and I won't even fill out a lot of this information like I normally would. So I'm going to save and continue the case data entry. And um, I'm doing this and enrolling them even though I might have had contact in the past um, because they don't have an entry yet in PNBOT specifically. Um, so then I just go through case data entry just like I'm enrolling any other patient. And I can specify that this navigated episode is a recurrence over here under cancer information because I had checked off that recurrence variable. So um, I can select my cancer type and I can just select a recurrence as being yes over here and that's basically stored and I just fill out the rest of the details there. And I would of course click on save. So what I just showed you is essentially what you would do um, if a patient has a recurrence um, but does not have a record already in PNBOT. Um, PNBOT doesn't really care if it's a recurrence or not. Um, it really cares about how many entries um, a patient has in its system as far as cases go. Um, so a patient, no matter how many um, navigated episodes they have with the program, should only ever have one entry in um, the patient list over here. However, they can have multiple entries in the case list over here. So let's um, go through a different scenario. I'm back in my home screen um, where I have a patient that I actually did navigate in the past and documented um, that case in PNBOT already. So um, right now I want to make a second case for that patient because that first case is closed and now they're back and I need to make a second record. So I'm going to go to re-enroll slash add a new case for formerly navigated patient and I'm going to click on case information to take me to the case data entry sheet. I'm going to clear out anything that's in here um, and then I can select a patient. And of course, this will only work if someone's already documented in PNBOT. So this time, um, for example purposes, I'm going to choose second example patient. And um, that will automatically bring up what I previously entered for this patient's most recent, and in this case, only case. So second example patient, I can see, um, was navigated back in 2013 we closed the case in 2014 because navigation was successfully completed or no longer needed, and um, that was a prostate cancer diagnosis. It was not a recurrence, and some of the details um, I had logged before, such as their data biopsy and date of treatment initiation, which were all back in 2013. Now, I don't want to write over that information um, now that the patient is back um, with a recurrence and needs 
navigation services again in 2016 because um, I still want this information for reference. So um, what I'm going to do is click on add a new case here. Um, so when I do that, I'll get prompted with this dialog box that says, patient two currently has one case. Do you want to add a new case? So I will click on yes. And then now I have a new blank form. Select which case the number changed from one to two because this is the patient's second case. Um, the same thing happened over here under navigation information for case instance because this is, again, the second case. A new unique um, case ID number is assigned, so that's four. And then I can specify a new case start date. So um, we're starting a new case August, 2016, um, maybe there's a different referral source, um, such as community organization, let's say. I'm not going to fill out case close date because we aren't um, closing the case yet. So cancer type, maybe it is still a prostate cancer diagnosis, but this time it is a recurrence, so I'm going to select yes. and. My dates now for um, my cancer timeline are going to be completely different, so it's good that I started a brand new case for this patient. Um, and then I can fill out that new information here as I see fit. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Save, and that updates the database. So now I just want to show you what all of that looks like on the back end in the list sheets. Um, or the databases. So I'm going to click on see full list of cases. So now second example patient still has their um, first case and I'm looking at the case instance column here. So case instance one for second, second example patient is this case over here um, from 2013 and all of that information is still here in that row. That hasn't changed. Um, but now, second example patient has a second row for case instance two. Um, and that contains the 2016 information that I just entered. So it's OK for one patient to have multiple rows in this case list in case they have multiple episodes or periods of time that they receive navigation services. Now, in contrast to that, I want to go look at the raw data for my patient list. Um, as you can see here, second example patient has a row, and even though they have two rows in the case list, because they have two cases, um, they still only have one single row here in patient list. And that's because you never want to make more than one entry for the same person for um, patient list. So, Basically, um, what I might do instead is under patient data entry for this second case, I wouldn't go and create a new patient record. That would be duplicative and it would mess up the data if I wanted to report on the number of patients served. Um, second example patient would get counted twice even though they're one person and that isn't correct. So I would click on instead, look up or update an existing patient record, and I would select second example patient. And um, this would be a good opportunity to look back at some of the information just to see if anything changed. So I don't expect that you know race or ethnicity would change, but maybe their contact information or their insurance has changed. And this would be a good opportunity to change some of that. So maybe I can put you know, their email is now 12345678 at email.com, and they now have, I don't know, private insurance instead of Medicaid, let's say. And then I can save those updates for the patient without creating a new entry. And I'm going to go to see full list of patients to show you what that looks like. So again, there's still only one row for second example patient. Um, but now I see that the email and the insurance has been updated. Um, and that's basically how it works for re-enrolling a patient into navigation services. I know that how a navigation program defines a case and when navigation services start and stop um, may differ by program, but that's sort of the um, technical side of how it would work um, in documentation and PNBOT. Thanks for